Well, hello, everybody. It is Friday, and that's right. Two movie reviews in a few in one week. We are catching up for lost time from last week. Last night, we went and saw Expendables 4. They're back. And no, that is not the actual subtitle. It's just Expendables where they slap the four and where the A should be. Kind of kind of nifty. What's that? It's the expend forables. That's right. This movie, of course, has all, mostly all of them back. Sylvester Stallone, Dolph Lundgren, uh, 50 Cent. Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, oh, Fox. Jason Statham. Yep. Megan Fox, uh, Dolph, um, and uh, Couture. Couture, and then Andy Garcia, and then uh, a couple of the guys that, that were kind of new. So I was very well, excited to see them. To be fair, if I remember right, Megan Fox and that other uh, Asian actress, they were both new. They weren't in three. No, there, there were like several, that's the, several new ones in this one. Yeah, that that's the big, I guess you could say it's not a twist because you see it in the previews, but that's the, that's the big thing to this movie. Even in the previews, I wasn't fond of is adding two females to the Expendable team because the Expendables to me is... You know, these basically the first movie was let's just get a bunch of older action heroes and put them in a fun movie with explosions and guns and all that and kick ass fighting. And every movie after that, they tried to add a new action person. I mean, hell, they had Frazier, Kelsey Grammer in one, but they toughened them up and it worked. Uh, th so no spoilers for those first watching first five minutes. We just talk about the movie. No spoilers. We grade it. Then you'll see the movie graphic come back up. After that, it's all spoilers, baby. So, so it, let's dive it, into it. Yeah, Expendables uh, 4, it, they're armed with every weapon they can get their hands on. This Expendables team, they're the world's last line of defense. And the team gets their call when all the other options are off the table. Andy Garcia comes in and... You got nuclear detonators. You gotta, you gotta take care of. And if not, bad things are gonna happen, and the world's gonna go boom. That is, in essence, the entire plot. So it starts off in Libya, where I believe the bad guy was played by Jet Li. Wasn't that Jet Li? Uh, no, that's Equa Uias. Oh, I thought it. Okay, well, anyhow, then never mind. Jet Li's um, not in this one. So he. The guy Dennis just said, because I'm not pronouncing that name, is a bad guy going after these uh, nuclear detonators in Libya. And then the expendables, like Dennis said, are sent in via Andy Garcia, who's a CIA op. And they're supposed to stop this guy from getting the nuclear uh, detonators. Well, it wouldn't be a movie if they actually stopped them in the first 15 minutes. It would be over. So needless to say, uh, this isn't a huge spoiler. They don't stop them, which leads them to basically uh, part two of trying to stop them again. Except this time, Andy Garcia is going with them as kind of a babysitter to make sure they do it. Uh, Megan Fox is now part of the team. And so is uh, what's the actress's name? The Asian actress. Is that a pronounceable one? Oh, Levy Tran. Yeah, that's pronounceable. And uh, and they join the team, too. Now, uh, we'll see what Dennis thinks of this. Without giving away spoilers, I got to admit, even in the trailer, I was not fond of seeing Megan Fox and this other chick join the team. And I'll tell you why. The Expendables, when it started, was basically, let's grab a bunch of action guys that always were known for action parts in movies, put them together in one big team up movie and just do guns, explosions and fighting. You add in these, these female characters, Megan Fox is what? 110 pounds dripping wet. And you saw in the trailer, her and Jason Statham who are in a relationship, you know, uh, kind of fight each other in the living room of one of their places. And, I guess you could say it was a playful fight and he knew he could kick her ass because he didn't want to, but they filmed it like it was evenly matched. And then later in the movie, you see, you know, this isn't a spoiler. You see Jason Statham 
just kicking all sorts of ass over all these dudes that really know how to fight and stuff. And I'm just like, guys, get these, get these hundred, you know, if it's, what's that? Oh my God. I'm blanking on the actress's name. G Gina Carano, or what's the other MMA fighter that went on to do wrestling? You'd know her if you saw her, but she's been in a bunch of movies and stuff. Hell, she might have been in Expendables 3. I don't remember. It's been so long. But if you have women that were actually big and attractive, you know, like a Gina Carano, then I can believe it. But I can't, and I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, Dennis, are there women out there 105 pounds soaking wet that know all those moves? No, Probably. It, it reminded me a lot of Mortal Kombat. It was the same thing. Even my wife was like, oh, because she was sitting next to me in it. And, you know, um, Ronda Rousey, I think that's, that's it. Ronda Rousey. Her. You know, it, and that's just it. The girls... You know, when they brought in Chuck Norris, it's Chuck freaking Norris. They brought in Arnold Schwarzenegger in one of the previous ones. It's right. Arnold. I mean, that's exactly what it was. Now, I wasn't against it. Got a little eye candy in there. And, but, you know, it it did. It kind of detracted from, from, from the movie. And, and just and, to correct myself, Ronda Rousey was in number three and i'm looking at basically the whole cast of number three and she was she played a a, a character named luna and you know she was a badass she was a fighter in it but i can buy that from ronda rousey because but she's not this her dainty little skills and stuff and i mean they all did megan fox was there to look good she wore her black leather she wore her white uh, tank top uh you know it is take them out of the movie and uh yeah it would still be a good movie you yeah know. that's just but, it and and you know once again no spoiler review here there were twists and turns in the movie needless to say in the end obviously they stopped the nuclear detonation and stuff because the whole point is to start a war with Russia by detonating these nukes on a ship that has an American flag. So it's a false flag type thing to start a war. That's what it was. Um, I, I look at it this way. I mean, I went into this, all the Expendable movies, they're, it's, they're fun popcorn flicks, high yeah. testosterone, lots of action, kind of like Fast and Furious. And, you know... I expect that. I expect there to be good, good, uh, good fight scenes. The uh, the green screen stuff was not great in this movie. Um, oh, I was just about to say one of the negatives when they did these tight shots on the ocean or even yeah. in some of the vehicles, you're looking at the background going, oh, my God, that is such a bad green screen. <laughs> It reminded me of like the old Lucille Ball shows from the 50s and 60s where they're driving in a car and you can just see the stuff going. And I was like, wow. I mean, wow. They're, they they must have been cutting budget for, for all the stars in it because, yeah, that was uh, some pretty weak sauce there. So let's uh, let's give it our... Uh our our rating so we can move on to the spoiler one you um you first went first thing. yesterday i'll go first today you know like dennis said for a fun popcorn action flick i'd like to go higher but i'm giving it a 6.5 wow actually we are not far apart i'm giving it a 6.0 um uh, we'll we'll dig into it into the into the spoiler section. It was it was fine. If you want a no brainer, sit down and watch them. I think it's the weakest out of uh, of all four movies, um, but it was still fun. Just turn your brain off, and uh, you know it's not bad. It's not great. Yeah. Well, and speaking of the budget, while you pull up the IMDb and Rotten Tomato stuff. The budget apparently by Google was a hundred million dollars. Yeah, so it really wasn't that big. I bet most of it went to uh, the the stars because yeah, and, and well, we'll talk about it in the spoilers. Like I said, the effects 
they could have done a little more with it. But in this realm of movies blowing up to over $200 million to make, I mean, you just get to a point where it's like, it's ridiculous how much movies cost when you look at older movies and how well they were done. So anyhow, what do we got for the real reviewers, we'll say? So uh, 5.1 on IMDb. We always know it's a little low, so it's probably on par with us. Uh, oh, interesting. Um, on Rotten Tomatoes, the critics hate it. It's at a 14. And there is no audience score. And I know there's a bunch of people that have already rated it, but uh, they are not showing it for some reason. Yeah. Well, I mean, it. yeah. What are you going to do? Um, all right, guys. It is that time. Spoiler review of The Expendables 4 in 3, 2, 1. Hello, we're back. Um, this is where we spoil it. If you don't want to see it, bye-bye. Like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Come back after you watch the movie. Okay, out of the gate. Uh, so my do so this was one of the first movies in like a years Dennis and I saw separately because my daughter and I went at an earlier time and then Dennis and his wife went at a later time, two different theaters. So my daughter was like really surprised when this first big spoiler happened in the movie. Um, they're in Libya, the, the main team without the ladies. They haven't joined yet. And Stallone is flying his big ass plane that has the teeth on it and all that. And he's he's dodging, you know, missile blasts by shooting off the flares and all that. Where well, the plane gets hit, it's about to go down. He's like, just just finish the mission. Finish the mission. You know, Statham's like, no way, screw this mission. I'm gonna save my friend. Long story short, the plane crashes. They go up to this burning husk of a plane and in the pilot seat is, is this body burned beyond, beyond all recognition except for the hand that has Sylvester Stallone's ring on it. And you're like, no, Stallone is dead. And he's out. it's got his middle finger and he's flipping everybody off. It was awesome. So right there, my daughter was like, what? And I was like, right? And I'm thinking, yeah, there's no way we've seen this in too many movies where at some point in the end, he'll be back and he'll, and he'll of course, do his little, well, this is how I did it type of thing. Yep. yep. The one thing I will say about this, there, there were a number of twists. I, I had told my wife right then in there, yeah, he'll be back at the end. We'll see how he did it. Blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, oh, when the bad guy, which was, you know, unnamed because nobody knew he was, I was like, oh, it's this guy. And I pointed it right out. And she goes, really? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, I, they, they, they made him seem like they were twists and turns and cool. And yeah, no, it was very transparent. Everything was throughout the, throughout this. Like I said, if you wanted some kind of climactic thriller, whodunit, what about that? This is not the movie for you because it's all about the action. The action was fine. The 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 hand to hand scenes were great, but yeah, the story was about as basic as as basic could get. Yeah, and uh, you know, I guess we'll leave out who the bad guy was, actor wise. Yeah, we might as well. Don't don't okay. spoil that for. We, but Dennis that. nailed it. I mean, when the dude showed up on screen as one of the good guys, I'm like, right, sure. Nobody's seen this movie before. Um, I mean, usually the spoiler section of these reviews is longer, but it doesn't need to be because uh, this movie didn't have that many levels to it. Uh, I will say when they were all, when they got to the big uh, aircraft carrier ship that had the nukes on it, uh, without Stallone because he's dead. Um, all the men are like decked out with their straps of ammo and grenades and gear and all this stuff. Megan Fox is wearing like tight leather pants, a leather half shirt. So you can see her stomach and she's got maybe one strap of ammo and she's got a, uh, you know, automatic uh, machine gun. And like, that's it. And it's like, come on. And then the Asian chick who was attractive 
uh, way too many tattoos, but was attractive. Same thing. Low cut, showing the boobs, which, hey, that's cool. It is a eye candy movie from the standpoint of the guys doing their action and fighting and the ladies. But you want to have some believability in it for the love of God. And all she had was like this. Uh, she's, of course, a master or uh, martial arts specialist. And she's got this chain that has a knife type weapon on the end of it. She swings around and stuff. And I think she had maybe one gun and just like, wow, you were totally playing to the male audience with the dudes all buffed up with the gear and the chicks like running around almost, you know, wearing nothing. I mean, it was I mean, hilarious. Like her, her character, she's got this uh, um, chain and she whips and it cuts people and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, okay. But you know, there, there, there was no believability in, in, in any of the girl scenes. And, you know, that's why I hearkened it back to Mortal Kombat. You know, it was the yeah. same thing. You got a, a, a girls that are barely over a buck's, uh, buck wet. And um, they're taking on the seasoned battle ready, you know, armored up uh, fighters. And in some cases, and yeah, it was just, uh, there was no believability to it. You know, at least with the guys, they had, there was a lot of attempt at humor in this. And there were quite a few of the jokes that landed throughout it. The beginning, the middle, and even the end. You know, Gunner Dolph's guy, you know, he's got bad eyesight and he's the sniper and stuff. There were guys in our theater that were openly laughing at a bunch of the oh, yeah. jokes. So it really did land on some of the humorous section, it was really good guy banter, you know, busting each other balls. And, you know, it, it had its moments. It, it did, just like all the other movies. This one just had a lot fewer of them. And, uh, yeah, the girls just did not bring it. That They that were just, it, honestly, it. They, were, they were out of place. That's yeah. all it was. Because the first three movies... And yes, the previous one had Ronda Rousey in it, but she was more gunned up and not as glammed up like and these two were. in there fighting, you know. And, right, you know, doing what and she does. We mentioned Gina Carano, even in her stuff. That's what she's known for, and, and they do it. You know, Randy Kulcher was awesome because, you oh, know. Oh, it's Couture. It's Randy Couture. Oh, there it is, Couture. Thank you for the correction. He came up there, Toll Road did, and, you know, they always mention his uh, his ear. And he's like, well, I thank you for, for bringing that up. And then he explains his wrestling uh, injury and stuff like that, which was awesome. Multiple times in the movie. They've done it before. I was glad to see that continue. Um, but, yeah, all the way, like I said, throughout everything, this is the most unforgettable one of them. Um, you know, I, I don't want to say skip it. If you like these kind of movies, you will enjoy it. I did. I had fun with it. It's not something I'm going to run out and buy again. It's not going to be part of my collection. Although I do own the first three. I don't know if I really need to buy this one, but I'm glad I watched it. It was enjoyable enough. Exactly. Um, I, 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 I totally agree. If you have a big screen TV, then the special effects will look good. If you're looking to kill time at a matinee, don't pay full price. Hit it at a matinee for the big screen. Um, it's just, you know, for all these movies, you have to suspend, uh, you know, belief or whatever. And it's easier in the first three. But this one, it was just too hard to with, you know, Megan Fox and this other actress running around all glammed up. Uh, in it. I mean, there was one scene in the end where Megan Fox had a little bit of blood sp splatter on her face and it's just like, all right, whatever. So that's that. Um, if you want uh, uh, something that's great, going to have great reviews guaranteed, Cordrat the Reckoning. Guys, go check this out. It's the book Dennis and I've been pouring our heart and soul in for the past year. We are so close to the finish line. Uh, I'm getting the mini prints that everybody gets the playable character cards, four playable character cards, the, the shattered reach map, seven by 10 
uh, mini prints are all going to be sent to the printer today. And so is the Lilineth trading card. The beanies are here, as you can see, just waiting for the t-shirts to come in so we can start mailing that stuff out. The game module should be hitting the printer next week. The proofing of the actual graphic novel is being done right now by the by a proofreader uh, that has better grammar skills than us. And you got to get another set of eyes on it. And um, other than that, we're just looking to get to that $100,000 stretch goal so we can unlock the four-page Bud Root story. Pages one, two, and three of it are up. Once page four is complete, I'll put it up and then we'll put all four pages up on the campaign uh, for sale to get the original art. His cover, original art to this cover he did sold within the first half hour when we launched it last year. I'm sure his four pages will go quick as well. Uh, this is what the two page spread looks like in progress by our buddy Dan Lawless, who is just killing it on the colors with Bud. So go check it out, share it, back it. We're over $90,000 if you take the total of the Kickstarter and add it into this campaign. So support it. Uh, the campaign's only going to be up until uh, mid-October, then it's down, and uh, that'll be that. So thank you for joining us. Next Wednesday is Gary Martin. Uh, he's joining us to talk about the decade of the 60s and comic books. And uh, we'll see how his campaign's going for his art book. Gary's a fantastic artist. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. And we will catch you guys later. Live long and prosper.